All right. Well, that brings us uh, into the exciting part of the evening, which is uh, all about LinkedIn. So uh, we've got Julie Mason uh, waiting in the wings here, and she's going to talk to us tonight about uh, how to leverage uh, LinkedIn events, um, whether you run them or not. So you don't even need to have an event. So that sounds interesting. So uh, a couple of quick facts as well, too. Uh, so, so Julie mentioned there's something like uh, 24,000 events created on LinkedIn each week. So that means there are more than 1.5 million registrations to those events on uh, LinkedIn. So that's an average of 62 and a half registrations for every single event that's uh, created. So if one of those was your events, that could be 62 and a half people coming along or uh, contacting you. Don't know who the half a person is, but uh, there's potentially 62 <laughs> and a half people. <laughs> So a bit of background about Julie. Could she get a bit messy, couldn't it? It, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> so Julie helps um, businesses generate leads and sales on LinkedIn easily and uh, elegantly. So she's been running workshops and web webinars on LinkedIn for uh, over 12 years now. And uh, she's literally helped thousands of small business owners to position themselves more effectively, find their target audience and understand how to con uh, connect and uh, convert with ease using this platform called uh, LinkedIn. So Julie has been featured on the cover of Success Magazine. She's taught LinkedIn at the University of Sydney, University of Queensland, Griffith University, and uh, Recruiter.com. And she's the founder of the LinkedIn Sales Formula. So uh, I've known Julie for a while now. I heard her speak again a couple of weeks ago, as I said, and uh, she's got some sensational stuff to share with you tonight. So let's give uh, Julie a big rousing round of virtual applause. Thank you, Nick. And I'm so delighted to be here again. It was great to catch up with you that weekend. And um, I know that some of those tips blew your mind and I can't wait to blow everybody else's mind tonight. So um, before we get going, I just like to, if you could pop in the chat box, who here runs events, whether live on Zoom, in person, whatever, you know, metaverse, I'm, I'm diving into metaverse events this week. Uh, Nick, so that's a whole new world. Okay, we've got a couple. All right, Jane's doing her art classes, of course. Yep, cool. All right, so got a few people that are doing it. Even if you're not running events this uh, on this, there is going to be something that will be worthwhile waiting for that is going to blow your mind about how to find where your target audience is hanging out. And I think you're all going to just go with that. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to dive right on in because I know that there's always lots of questions at the end of this. So <laughs> um, I'm just going to move the video off to the side here and I will come in and ask questions at, um, at periods throughout this. So don't um, hesitate to pop them in the chat box there and I'll definitely come back to them. All right, so a couple of things that we're going to go through um, today, we're going to definitely look at two options to create an event on LinkedIn and the benefits of each. There are pros and cons to both of them, so we'll go through a little bit of that. Um, we're also going to cover, sorry, I've got to get my mouse working here, uh, four different ways LinkedIn can help promote your event for free. How cool is that? LinkedIn's going to promote it for free for you. Um, there is one, uh, a couple of paid ways that you can do it as well, but we're going to talk about those. Converting happy clicks into attendees. And we'll talk more about what is a happy click and why you can't trust a happy click and what you need to do about that. Um, and then, of course, the big one that's going to just blow your mind, how to leverage LinkedIn events to find your target market, even if you don't run events. Um, so you're going to love that. But as Nick said, there are 24,000 events created every week on LinkedIn. And there are 1.5, I was about to say 1,500, but 1.5 million RSVPs per week. So 62 RSVPs per event. I mean, anybody would kill for those numbers. But there are some tips around converting those what I call happy clicks into actual attendees. And we'll talk more about that towards the end of the presentation. But the first thing that you really need to look at is determining your goal uh, when setting up your event. As I mentioned, you can set up two different types of events. You can set one up on your personal profile 
which is fantastic. And if you've got a company page, you can also set one up on a LinkedIn company page. Now, they offer two different things. With your personal profile, there is no registration required on the event setup. So once you've set up the event on LinkedIn, um, attendees who or, or people that you might invite to that event are not required to register on the LinkedIn platform event page. You might drive them to a website or to Zoom where they register, but on LinkedIn, they don't need to register. So just need to note that. Now, doing it on your personal profile is absolutely brilliant for positioning yourself as an authority in your space, um, for thought leadership, uh, of course, brand awareness, all of those kind of things. Um, if you're looking to do it on your company page, for example, you can actually caption names and email addresses with registration provided, and this is the big one, so I need you guys to make a note of this, that if you do want to capture names and emails off your LinkedIn event, and by the way, this is the only place on LinkedIn that LinkedIn allow you to capture names and emails with their permission, right? But it is provided it is GDPR compliant. And what that means is that it needs to have the privacy compliance that came in about, when was that, Nick, about 2018 GDPR came in? I think it was around there. And it's a global um, data protection regulation. That's what GDPR stands for, global data protection regulation. Um, and so it's about protecting the privacy of those names and emails. Now, the way to get that, to be able to capture people's names and emails, all you need is to have a website with a privacy policy that is GDPR compliant. So, for example, mine is juliemason.com.au forward slash privacy. For example, that's the web page that is GDPR compliant. And all I do is take that URL from my website, pop it into the special box that LinkedIn give you when you set up your event, and bada bing, bada boom, you can capture people's names and emails. How cool is that, right? That's pretty amazing. Now, also with this, um, you can um, put a Zapier on a Z what's called a Zap, and it will um, LinkedIn have allowed one approved Zapier, which is an automation tool that allows you to take people from registrations from your LinkedIn company page on your event directly into your CRM, whether that be MailChimp or Infusionsoft or Constant Contact or whatever else that might be. So it's a very cool way to build a list uh, for lead generation and also for sales using it through your company page. But you do need to be aware that if you are going to use the registration form, that you need to be compliant with that. And as to answer Jeff's um, question there, how do you know if your policy page is GDPR compliant? I would send, just suggest to you that you do a little bit of Google research. I actually did that myself a few, probably about 12 months ago, and found privacy policies that were GDPR compliant, um, tailored those. I bought a template, filled in all of my relevant details, and then was able to whack that up there and easily do that. And it was all done through a proper legal website, right? There were uh, global lawyers doing international law that allowed you to do that. But I did pay for that template. It's not something that you can give away for free necessarily, but I would definitely recommend doing a little research, even checking with your own uh, legal advisor um, make sure that you're compliant for your website, the type of business that you do, the type of information you may collect and how you are intending to use it is going to be different for each and every one of you. So definitely check with your legal advisors as well. I highly recommend that. Um, but you can actually, this is the only place that LinkedIn allow you to do data collection 
of names and email addresses. Having said that, when somebody registers on your event page um, for the company page event, um, they have the option to check a box to say whether they're going to allow you to collect their details or not. And so there will be a percentage of people that definitely don't want their details collected and there will be a percentage of people that really don't care or are very happy for you to collect their, their details. So it won't collect every single person, but it's a hell of a lot better than what you do. And I have to say, it kind of sifts through the, the wheat from the chaff, so to speak, and allows you to, those that you are collecting, are kind of identifying themselves as saying, hey, I really want to find out more of your information. And so that's a good thing to have. Highly recommend that. Okay, so just remember that there are these two places that you can set up your LinkedIn event, your personal profile and your company page. And you really want to think about determining your goal here. If you've got a company page that's not terribly active, my advice is probably don't race to try and get it all active. Use your personal profile, even though you may not collect names and emails at this point. If you're driving them to a Zoom uh, registration page, you can easily collect people's names and emails off Zoom and, um, and that's okay. You can still use Zapier's to, you know, transport that information into your CRM. Um, but definitely think about the goal that you're looking to achieve here and what it is that you want to do. For most small business owners, though, I'm going to suggest start with your personal profile and get the hang of how all of this works before complicating it with GDPR rules and company pages, etc. And we'll talk about the different things that you can do. The other thing that we want to talk about here, and I just realized I haven't set up a a slide for this, but there are different ways that you can do events, of course. So for example, you could do a LinkedIn live event and I'll just stop the share for a second. I'm going to come back to the slides in a moment, but I want everybody to be out and I want to see everyone's faces to make sure that I'm you're all keeping up with me. Okay. <laughs> so, so you can do a, an event that goes directly to Zoom. That's one option, right? So if you're doing an online event, and it might not just be to Zoom, it could be to any, could be to go to webinar, it could be to, you know, whatever platform that you intend to use for your online event, you can do um, registration directly to an online event. You can also do a LinkedIn live event. So if you're doing a LinkedIn live event, you will need a third party tool like StreamYard. Um, Nick, I'm not sure if your team might be able to bring up the, the link, the URL for StreamYard. That would be great if uh, Lorena or JM could bring that up and put it in the chat box. StreamYard's a great tool. LinkedIn, unfortunately, don't have, like Facebook, their own live streaming service. So they have third party tools like StreamYard that do that for you. Now, the interesting thing with setting up a LinkedIn event that is going to a LinkedIn live is that your banner on your personal profile becomes the video at the actual event for that LinkedIn live. And then that LinkedIn live, when the event is over, is converted into being a post um, on your LinkedIn stream where people can re-watch that event. Does that make sense? Thumbs up or a yes in the chat box if that makes sense. So far, I haven't lost everyone. That's great news. <laughs> okay, good. The third type of event that you could do, so we've covered going to a Zoom online platform, for example, going to LinkedIn Live is the second one. The third one is if you're doing an in-person event, so it's face-to-face -face type event, you might be sending them to either a landing page to register on your website. It could be sending them to Eventbrite, for example, or even Meetup for that matter. If you're doing live events through any of those platforms uh, where you're putting your event information down and asking people either to pay or it's a free event, doesn't matter either way, then you need to be sending them to an external URL 
where they can register um, separate to the LinkedIn event. They then go and pay whatever amount of money it might be to attend your event and go from there. Does that make sense, everyone? So they're the different types of events. Now, there is one more type of event that's coming and I'm going to my very first one this week at 5 a.m. on Thursday morning and it is called the Metaverse VR event, which is the new version of eventing <laughs> where it's kind of like gaming. You know, you have your avatar that turns up in the virtual world and um, you can speak to other people if you've got the right headsets for virtual reality you can shake hands with people or actually with their their avatar in the virtual reality let me just tell you and i think nick saw my post about this last week or earlier this week it's a mind expanding place to be um, and I'm going to say that right now that would be a very advanced strategy, but it's certainly something I'm digging into. And um, just be aware that it is coming and I am going to show you the event page that I have actually registered for, um, where you can actually get the links to the virtual reality networking um, platform and you can try it out yourself. It's free to do. Um, but it does come, and I'm going to say this to all the ladies there in particular that are listening today, my word of advice if you're in the virtual reality networking space is tip number one, don't use your real name. Use a handle. First of all, we have a lot of things going out with identity theft and you definitely don't want your name to be out there in the virtual reality world. The second thing, even though this is like watching a video game and your avatar is like a character in a video game, you want to put activate what's called your personal space bubble so that other avatars can't come up and inappropriately touch your avatar. I know it's a really sad thing to say, but that was the first thing I learned when I went into the metaverse virtual reality networking. So just something for you to note, we'll all cry buckets of tears about this. And for some of you, you're not interested, but let me tell you, there are over 12,000 people registered for this event at 5 a.m. on Thursday morning. Let me tell you, that's a lot of people, right? So it's coming, whether we like it or not. It's kind of like cryptocurrency. It's going to take a slow burn, but let me tell you, the millennials, if that's your target audience, are going to be all over this stuff. And if you're targeting millennials, you need to know about that. So have we all got that? We've got the three main ones. We've got Zoom type events. We've got LinkedIn Live events, and we've got going to an in-person event. So taking them to an external URL where they buy their ticket to attend your physical event, wherever that might be. And of course, then we've got the metaverse, which we're not going to go into any further than that tonight, but I do want to tell you about it because it's a big thing that's coming. All right, so I hope you all caught up with me on that. It's a lot to take in on the event side of things. So determining your goal also comes down to determining what kind of event you are doing. So with that, you want to really set up your event with some critical elements in place. So this is what I did earlier this year, and it was an online event. It was going straight to a Zoom link, and this was done on my personal profile. So I'm going to give you the background to this and I'm going to give you the numbers to this as well. So the couple of critical elements that you'll see that I've pointed out here is I've got a really clear hero image for this event page. So make sure that your image stands out. OK, it tells people the main elements that they need to know just from the image itself. Right. The second thing that's really critical is naming your event so that when people see the title of the event, and this comes in really importantly when you're inviting people to your event, 
the name of it needs to be very clear. So mine is a sales masterclass, how to find your dream clients. Can't get clearer than that, right? Then you want to have the date and time that you're hosting this event, whether it's online or offline, that will be the next part. And then the event link. Now, with this particular event, I actually set it up direct to Zoom and I did it to a Zoom meeting that didn't require registration. Now, the reason I did that was to remove as many barriers to my prospects coming in and attending that event as possible. So I was really setting this up for thought leadership, brand awareness, and building trust with my prospects. So by removing as many registration barriers as possible, I got more people on the call. And the numbers for this are really interesting. So I'm going to break these numbers down and you might want to write these down for, you know, um, research purposes or remembering purposes. So I invited a thousand um, LinkedIn connections to this event. The numbers that actually ended up registering were just over 100. Now, it's not showing on my screen capture here, but it's just it was just over 100 between the two events that I was running for this. And I tried one to my business page and one on my personal profile. Between the two, it was just over 100. On the personal profile, I think it was about 81 or 82 people, roughly. There you go. So 1,000 invites, 82 people on this particular event page that said, yes, we're attending. The people that actually turned up from that were around 11 people onto that Zoom call. So just be mindful, it's roughly 10% of the number of people you invite are the number of people that will click the happy accept button. From that 10, from that 10 percent, so if you've got a thousand, it's going to be roughly a hundred. From that 100, roughly 10 percent will turn up in person. Has everyone got that? Thumbs up if that makes sense. So I'm really breaking this down for you tonight, okay? So be really mindful that LinkedIn is a slower social network than the others, but I want to give you the stats of exactly the event. Now, this is regardless of whether you're setting this up on the company page or your personal profile. Here are the details that you will need to fill in and just make a note in particular of that event image size. So it's 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, right? Because it doesn't easily tell you that anywhere on LinkedIn. They tend to just let you try and fob around figuring it out. But if you do 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, then you're going to have the perfect image size for your event hero image. So you then choose your organizer. And of course, if you're doing it on your personal profile, it's going to just put your name in there. If you're doing it on your company page, it may ask you which company page or, or what showcase page you might want to set it up on. The event type online or in person, of course, the event format is going to either be LinkedIn Live or if it's an in-person event or a Zoom event, for example, it might ask you for that external event link, right? So you need to be aware that the event format is just going to be determining whether it's LinkedIn Live or an external event link. Then the event name, of course, that's the title. Make sure you spend time getting a really great title for your event. The time zone it's hosted in, so I'm based in Brisbane, so it's going to do it in my time zone. But anybody who looks at that event, it will tell them what time zone it is for their time zone. Does it make sense? So LinkedIn automatically adjusts that for whoever comes onto that event page. Of course, you want your start and end date um, and a description of the event. And think about that description being along the lines of, what are you going to be telling them in that event? What will they learn? What are the three key points that they'll take away from attending that event? Now, it could even be a multi-speaker event where you can actually add in the other speakers. So you get the opportunity to do that. 
making sure that you need to be a connection to that speaker first. So you need to be a first LinkedIn connection with them in order to be able to add them. But in doing so, it gives them the opportunity to post that event out and to also leverage their network as well. So it's a great opportunity to expand your reach. And of course, once you've completed all of these details, and this is the important part, you must actually create a post. LinkedIn will force you to create a LinkedIn post about this event to go out on your newsfeed. And if you don't create that event, if you back out of it at that point, it doesn't save it as a draft. It's not something that you can set up and then go, okay, I'm going to put it up as a draft and then I'll publish it later. LinkedIn go, no, 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 you have to send it out live now. So whenever you're going to be doing a LinkedIn event, make sure that it's ready to go live from that point. Does that make sense? Great. Okay. Got lots of nodding of heads. That's fantastic. All right. And note that all LinkedIn events are public and available for everybody to see. You can't, as I said, you can't make it private event or draft event or anything like that. Once it's done, it's live to the LinkedIn verse, so to speak. Okay. So just a couple of tips around setting up your event. That last point, point 10, really important that um, you really think about the posts that you're going to do and really hype that up. And I'm going to give you some tips around the types of posts, the types of content that you can do to promote your event um, later on in this session. Okay. So there are four ways that LinkedIn push your event out for free on, on LinkedIn to, to promote your event. And the first one is via the search tab. So your LinkedIn event will be searchable via keywords. Let's say, for example, you might do, um, it could be um, digital marketing event that you might be doing. If you're, and that's the one at the top there, but um, if you type in digital marketing and search events on LinkedIn, then that's going to come up. If you type in women and you're looking for events for women on LinkedIn, for example, you type in women, in the search bar on LinkedIn, search for events and you'll get all the events that come up that are targeting women, for example. Um, you've got a whole range of things here. I'm going to go live actually on LinkedIn. We're going to do a new share here. Let me just bring that up. Where is that? Here we go. So I'm just going to flip over to LinkedIn now and just show you. So this is the event that I set up on my personal profile in March, right? So we'll just quickly go through this. You'll see that it's got the date here for March, my local time. If somebody else in New Zealand was looking at this or, or America, it would show their local time. Um, it has the, the um, URL for Zoom, has the 82 attendees, and it has the details here that I was talking to you about around what that is and of course the speakers that are going to be speaking at that event. So that's what an event page looks like, right? If you're going to search on LinkedIn and I'll just bring up a new tab because I've got other tabs that are all waiting there for me. Let me just show you a couple of ways that you can search for this. So for example, we'll use the keyword women, okay? That's all I've put in there is women um, is the keyword and in when we and this is on the free version of LinkedIn, by the way, we have these filters down below that search. And if we click on events, all the events that are coming up with the keyword women in them, and we've got about a thousand results for events with the keyword women in them, it's going to show you exactly what's going on in events for that. Right? Does it make sense? So you can see all of those keywords. For example, a different keyword could be um, for one of my clients who is a geotechnical, so I, uh, he's a geotechnical, I've got to remember how to spell it, <laughs> can't spell and type at the same time, engineer, right? That's his keyword. If you type that in and look for events, there are four events for geotechnical engineering 
events on LinkedIn. Who would have thought? Now that's a very niche topic, but if you have a look here, you'll see that there are 175 attendees, 159 attendees, 105 attendees, etc. right? And all of these are his target audience, essentially. Does it make sense, everyone? Just stop the share for a second and quickly just check in. Is there any questions so far? Because I know we're going quite technical at the moment. So any questions at this point? I haven't looked at the chat box, Nick. So is there anything in the chat? No question. Uh, oh, there is a couple, actually. Uh, okay. What have we got? Can you do this with multiple company pages? Yes. Short answer. Short <laughs> Absolutely. Answer. I, I think that's the only one there that uh, has been uh, asked and not answered yet. Okay, cool. Everybody, uh, everybody good to go? We're continuing on? Awesome. Is this helpful so far? Double thumbs up if it is. Right. Excellent. Fantastic. So um, keeping on going then with our and I've got to find the share, here it is, um, with our slides. So the search event, LinkedIn will freely promote your event. And so this is why having your keywords in your title of your event and in the description are really important so that your event shows up in search for people who are looking for events on that topic, right? Now the My Network tab, this is where you'll get invites. And this is what happens when you invite your connections, that will show up in the My Network tab. But of course, the third one is the feed. If you're doing your post and LinkedIn automatically say, if you're going to do an event, you want it to go live, you must do a post about that. It's going to show up in the news feed on LinkedIn as well. And then, of course, direct invitation where you are actually messaging people who are your connections or your target audience in your connections to invite them to come on to that event. So let me just show you again. I'm going to um, I'm just going to stop the share and come back to LinkedIn here again for a moment and show you what I mean about the My Network tab. So. If you come to the My Network tab, and I'll actually start from scratch here. If you come to the My Network tab here, and you'll see here that there are people who are inviting you to connect. There are people who are inviting you to, and I'm going to click see all 20 invitations, right? Because it will split those invitations into people who want to connect with you, newsletters that you're invited to subscribe to, and events that you've been invited to attend. So when you invite somebody to attend your LinkedIn event, you will get an invite that shows up something like this, okay? And for the most part, you only have the title of your event to really hammer home. Most people won't click through to find out what that event is all about. So I've clicked through on a different tab for Paul's event here, which is gain the edge it's a two-day live event uh, plan your next 12 months with abundance etc he's got four attendees at the moment maybe he needs to come to this uh, workshop that we're on right now we'll show him how to increase that um, and then he's got his description and who's speaking okay so this event here is getting some traction but not much and people will either go yeah, it's not really rocking my boat, so I'm going to ignore it. Or they'll click what I'm calling the happy accept button, right? So when they click the happy accept button like that, now this is done through a business page. It's hosted by Abundance Global Note. So this is what I'm talking to you about with that GDPR registration form. You all with me so far? Coming back to the two ways of doing it. So we can register for this event using our LinkedIn profile, all our details. And if you notice, this is a little checkbox here that allows me or that gives me, gives them the permission that I'm allowing them to take my information to add to their database. Okay. Now, not everybody will submit that information, but that is the, um, the actual LinkedIn registration page. It's 
templated. You can't change it, unfortunately, except for the details around the title, the date, and who's hosting it, okay? So really be aware of the types of events that you're, you're setting up. And again, now that you can see that, you can see what that strategy is and how it will play out. All right. So coming back to our slides again, these are the different ways that we've covered. Uh, there is a fifth way that people can find your event and that is on paid ads. And we'll come to that in just a second. But on the free and paid options, let's look at the limitations that LinkedIn have around this. You can only invite a thousand connections per week to attend your event. This is a LinkedIn limit. You cannot change it. It doesn't matter if you're on the free version, the business premium or the sales navigator version of LinkedIn. It doesn't matter. You're limited to 1000 connections per week that you can invite. So you really want to ensure that you invite those who really fit that audience avatar for that event. Okay. Now, having said that, think about this for a minute. I've got seven and a half thousand connections on LinkedIn. If they are all my target audience and I wanted all seven and a half thousand to get there, I need to be prepping and promoting my event at least eight weeks out from the event date. So I can do a thousand invites each week to my, my connections with that half a thousand in that last week. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah. So you've got to think of your event timeline on LinkedIn around that as well. All right. Secondly, if you are doing it from a company page perspective and you decided to go the company page route and you've got, let's say, for example, a couple of admins of your company page, each admin can invite a thousand of their connections each on there, right? So let's say, for example, I'm doing a, an event on LinkedIn with Nick and Paul and Alistair, right? The, three, the four of us are going to rock an event, okay? <laughs> Yay! And Paul's going. So the, the trick that would be good here is for that promotional time frame of your event, if it's my company page, I would make Nick, Paul and Alistair admins temporarily of my company page so that I can get them to send an, uh, a thousand invites each. Does it make sense? Yeah. And that way we're pooling all our connections and we can grow greater response time, right? Or greater response to that event. Now, if you're on the company page, unfortunately, you can't invite followers of your company page unless they're connected to one of the page admins. And that's a big important thing to remember. Followers of your page are not connections to your personal profile, so they can't be invited. However, you could run LinkedIn ads to those followers, if that makes sense but you won't be able to invite them unless they're directly connected to you. And LinkedIn ads actually have a very specific event ad um, setup that auto automatically propagates the LinkedIn ad with the event details from your event page and will do that as an ad out there for you to your specific target audience, okay? So you can do your own LinkedIn ads if you want, but if you're finding that LinkedIn ads is a little overwhelming, and it can be, then you could use the LinkedIn event ad template that LinkedIn um, ad platform has set up. It automatically propagates all your details and you're off and running to the races with that. You just choose your audience, etc. cetera. Now, link, this is LinkedIn's suggestion. I am going to pass this on because in their training that they did on LinkedIn events, they suggested that if you are targeting executives, for example, um, and that is your target audience, you might want to consider a sponsored in-mail campaign, which is a sponsored message ad, 
um, campaign for better open rates, which is different to a LinkedIn event ad. So there are different types of ads that you can do on LinkedIn. Now, I am not a LinkedIn ads expert. I would recommend if you're looking for LinkedIn ads knowledge to follow a chap called AJ Wilcox. He is the world's leading expert on LinkedIn ads. In fact, LinkedIn even have him train LinkedIn ads. He's that good. Um, so I would follow his podcast, join his LinkedIn group around LinkedIn advertising. He has got some brilliant tips around that and make sure that you've got a really developed strategy before diving in because it is probably the most expensive ad platform to use in comparison to Facebook ads, for example, okay? So keep in mind that um, that this is, you know, I, I just, I see that Jane is saying it takes twice as long as a Facebook event. Look, yeah, it can, absolutely. Without, uh, without question, I'm gonna stop the share for a second and come back and answer any more questions that we've got on this. It can absolutely take a lot longer than, than Facebook. But the difference with LinkedIn and Facebook is that LinkedIn is this absolutely premium database that you can tap into for free to find your ideal target audience. Facebook don't give you that, right? So if your target audience is, and I'm gonna to say to you, as I've just explained, I've got a client who is a geotechnical engineer. He's actually a geotechnical seismic engineer. There's only four of them in the world. And he has a very targeted audience. But we've even found his target audience just using LinkedIn events, right? And not necessarily to run them, but to leverage them. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about later on around how do you use LinkedIn events to find your target audience even if you're not running them yourself, okay? So just be really mindful around these strategies. The stuff that I'm giving you tonight is quite high level stuff um, in comparison to, you know, are we looking at just the basic levels of doing an event? No, we're really looking at targeting here, okay? All right, so any questions before I move on um, on that? Is there anything that's coming up around that? Nick, have we got anyone? Oh, Annie, yes. Hi, thanks. That's been fascinating so far. I've written tons of notes. Um, the first question I did have in the chat is, are the hashtags searchable for events? Yes. So I go through and put animals, animal lovers, animal communication, animal whisperer, all sorts of different things. So will people find the events from searching? It will. But LinkedIn and hashtags are a, have a love-hate relationship, right? Um, unlike Instagram, where you can put 20, 50 hashtags in and, and they're all relevant, and they are to some degree on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn prioritise the first three hashtags and they actually become part of the URL of the post. So they're cached as part of the post. So you've really got to be doing your hashtag research and going, okay, on LinkedIn, what are going to be the best hashtags for me to use with this event? And use the first three at the top because they'll get, you know, put into the URL. The rest, they're still searchable, Annie, but they're not as important on the post as those first three. So great question. Thank you. And so when you just said to put them at the top, do you actually put hashtags at the top of your post rather than at the bottom? No, I'm kind of, you can put them anywhere through the post. So, you know, you might have, I'm running a hashtag LinkedIn workshop on, you know, da, 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 for example, and that's in the post, but it's the first hashtag, if that makes sense. Yep. If you're doing your hashtags at the bottom, and that's where I would recommend that they would be, if you don't have them through the text. Mm -hmm. then make sure the top for the first three are the at the top of that pile does it make sense um, yes it does i'll have to go cool. back and change all my ads. <laughs> thanks once you've done them unfortunately it's not going to change the url right, to the okay post. so once it's done it's done but you can learn from here yes. and move forward better right thank you for well that. done <laughs> okay any other questions that are coming up Anybody else? No, we'll keep chugging along then. Okay, great. 
All right, so um, where am I here? Okay. So just remember your thousand invites. Uh, LinkedIn actually will remind those who register for your event by sending them an, a LinkedIn notification one week before the event and three days before the event. In other words, LinkedIn really want your events to work for you, which is fantastic. LinkedIn also will encourage those who click the happy attend button. Remember the happy attend click that we've got. Um, to add the event to their online calendar, whether it be Google or Outlook or whatever it might be. So, and it will show it up, as I mentioned, in the time zone that that person is located in. So, which is great. So, um, how do you convert happy clicks, those happy clicks, those accept button pushes to registrations? Well, I've got four steps for you here. The first one is to follow up all event attendees, the ones that have clicked the happy attend button with a personal message through the events networking tab. Now, I'll show you this live now. I think this is really important to see. And um, so if we go live onto LinkedIn, if I go back to my event here, you will see that those 81 people here, there is a networking tab that comes on your event page. And I can then go through and see all of the 81 attendees and then send them a message to encourage them to actually attend live. Does that make sense? Yes. Isn't that cool that LinkedIn give you that? I think it's freaking fantastic, actually. The second thing is that if they need to take further action, let's say, for example, that you want them to go to a website where they need, it might be a live in-person event and you want them to go to a website where they need to pay some money, um, put in some more registration details or whatever it might be. You want to send an encouraging message to get them to go from the event tab on LinkedIn where they've done a happy accept button through to the message and say, hey, I'm super excited you're keen to attend. There's just one more critical step to go pop over to this website here where you can actually claim your seat and, and go from there, okay? So you want to encourage them to take that next step, okay? The third option you could do here is create a personalised Loom video. I am sure, Nick, you have talked about Loom somewhere, right? Yes? Uh, Loom is a great little short video uh, tool that you can use that really hyper personalizes your message. Alternatively, you want to go onto the LinkedIn app, go to your event, click on the, the networking tab on your event page, and then do a voice message to each of those attendees and really hyper personalize it. Let me tell you, it will skyrocket. I know it's labor intensive, but if these are your target audience, and you really want to get them on board, it will absolutely skyrocket your attendee results, okay? It is, as I said, labor intensive, but my gosh, it will make a big difference, right? And if you're using LinkedIn Live as your streaming platform, attendees will automatically get a push notification that your event has gone live. So LinkedIn are really you know, keen to push their own LinkedIn lives. Um, so they're going to make sure that that gets an added boost. Now, I really want everyone to remember here that LinkedIn is the Nana driver's social network, okay? And what I mean by that is if we think of um, the Autobahn highways in Germany where you can bang up the freeway at 360 kilometres an hour and not get booked, um, at, or do whatever speed you like. Let's think of that as the social media autobahn. And in the fast lane, you're going to have things like Twitter and Clubhouse and all of that stuff going on that if you move away for 20 seconds and come back, that conversation has left you in the dust and it's totally changed in 20 seconds, right? In the middle lane is going to be things like Instagram and and Snapchat and Facebook and, and the news feed moves fast and the response rate moves fast. LinkedIn is definitely 
the the grandma lane of social networks it moves at a much slower pace doesn't mean it's anything less worthwhile keeping in mind it's a premier business network with the most educated and affluent members of any of the social networks so if you're looking finding the money I'm telling you now it's probably going to be on linkedin right is that's your target audience so you just need to allow additional time for your response rates to events. So if I was doing an event and I was promoting it just on Facebook posts and using Facebook ads, I can do a webinar and get 80 attendees on there in probably four days using LinkedIn ads and just doing content posting without problem, okay? And very little ad spend for that as well. But if I'm doing um, a Zoom call similar on, on um, LinkedIn, I'm probably going to need to extend that lead time to at least two weeks to allow for the posts to go out, to allow for the invitations to go out, for the messaging to go out. But generally speaking, I'm going to get a higher quality person attending that event with less tire kickers than I would on Facebook, who are more committed to their personal and professional growth than on the other social networks. And the reason for this is the psychology between those social networks. On Facebook and Instagram, we're interrupting a social event that's happening. On LinkedIn, people go on to LinkedIn to find answers, whether it's to their career, whether it's to find clients, whether it's to help their business grow, whatever that might be, they're going on there for a different reason. It's not necessarily to be social first and foremost, it's to do business first and foremost, right? So the psychology is quite different. But do remember that you might feel like you're driving a Ferrari, but you really are driving it at snail's pace on LinkedIn, okay? Um, so you want to have a timeline, just like you would if you're planning a wedding, you have certain elements that you need to prepare. Depending on what that is, you really want to have an event promotion timeline that might go out, whether if it's to a live event, it could be a month out, it could even be two months out if you're doing a live in-person event. It could be two weeks out if you're doing a webinar, um, whatever that might be. It could even just be a week and you're doing it on LinkedIn Live. You may not need quite as much push time because LinkedIn Live is going to get promoted higher by LinkedIn because it's part of their platform. So really think about your timelines that you've got. Make sure that you have your organization laid out. Um, and and plan effectively for that. So what kind of posts could you do in your content to promote your event? And this is just something that I do regularly, right? Um, you would start with the overview post and that would be what you would do when you're hitting live on your event. And the overview is what is this event about? You know, who should, not necessarily who should attend, but what will I learn in this event? What are you going to be covering? You know, what are those three points, for example? The second content that you could put out is who is this post, who is this event best for post? You know, who should attend this post? And maybe who shouldn't attend this event, for example? The second, uh, sorry, the third one is the secret post. What is the secret that attendees will learn when they turn up to that event? What is the, the thing that's going to transform their lives when they turn up? So what's the secret that you will be sharing um, at that event? If you've got guests going to the event, then you would do a post all on its own around that special guest, highlighting who they are. You could do a testimonial or results post, you know, talking about results that people who have attended your event in the past have gotten. Perhaps with Jane, it might be the, the, the results that people have had when they've come to their paint and sip. It might have sparked creativity, which really got them on to a whole new world of painting, for example. 
thing of course just coming up to that event you want to be playing to the what i affectionately call the deadline dances you need a reminder post the day before and you need a last chance post an hour before your event right to get those deadline dances across the line and if you noticed and my internet's going a little unstable sorry if you noticed nick did a facebook live minutes before this happened just to get those deadline dances across right nick thumbs up yes you were targeting the deadline dances so these are a couple of things that you could do in turn in terms of the content that you would do to promote your posts over whatever period it is that you're timelining it out on so let's dive right on into linkedin nick how much time have i got left by the way oh about three minutes three minutes okay i'm going to quickly dive into linkedin now and i want to show you that amazing thing that you can do when you go live so I'm, i've got a couple of quick things here that i want to share with you uh, where is it here we go so um Eugenita, i can never say her name right i've got a bit of a dyslexia and she always does my heading with her name but this is an event that has finished now it ran um weekly i think up until the 29th of june and you'll notice here that this is targeted to women networking and stilettos where networking yields a high return okay it's the online extravaganza she's done this through her company page she set it up it's an online thing every every week she sends people directly to a landing page to also fill in for the rules that she has around this event but look at how many attendees she's gotten on this event 24,000 attendees coming to this event now here's the cool thing if my target audience is women and I've clicked accept on this uh, uh on this event which i have this will change from the accept invite or register invite to the share tab here but again coming down to that networking tab not only can i see on my own events who is attending but guess what if i'm not running events myself i have the ability to go onto those events and see all 23,587 people who have registered for this event. Now, I'm just going to let that sink in for a moment. If, yeah, exactly, Krish. Oh my God, that's gold, right? If you are not planning on running events, but you want to find where your target audience is hanging out, you can go on to events, register for them, go on here find the networking tab once you've registered for that event and go and see all of the people who are in there that could be, even though there are men going to this women's event, doesn't matter. You've got 23,000 people that you can search through. Now, keeping in mind that if you're on the free version of LinkedIn, it will only show you the first thousand results. If you're on business premium, it will show you two and a half thousand results. If you're on Sales Navigator, it will show you all of them, okay? Just to let you know the difference around your free premium and Sales Navigator versions. Okay, so that's the cool thing. Um, again, this is the one that I'm going to on Thursday morning at 5 a.m. This is the new version of Metaverse Networking. Um, it's via the virtual reality there are over 12,000 attendees going here. Again, I can go on and I can click on the networking tab and see exactly who they are. But um, when you go into the details here, it will tell you exactly all of the things that you need to do to get onto this virtual reality event, right? It is actually held on uh, altspace.vr and awe.live um, you would need to go on and make sure that you set up your alt space vr before well before you join this event because otherwise you'll be overwhelmed and not sure what the hell you need to do 
Um, but definitely this is the new version of networking that's coming through. So you could simply go onto LinkedIn and search Metaverse Networking. This event will come up. You can have a look at it. Definitely recommend that um, you can go and attend that event if you want to see what the new type of networking is that's available. All right, so before we wrap up, um, just coming back, um, Nick, any questions that we've got? I should probably just stop the share for a moment. Any questions that we've got coming up? And I'll have a drink of water because I've been going flat tack. Okay, um, you're on mute, Nick. All right, I thought I'd unmuted myself, but there you go. Um, yeah, one here from Anna who is asking about if you don't have any or many LinkedIn connections, can you still use this events feature? Yes, you can. Remember that we'll go out um, live via the search option, um, via elsewhere, but you will want to probably run some LinkedIn ads to it, potentially using the LinkedIn event ads um, uh, option to start to boost that up. I would encourage you to do some good content posting, tag some people that you are connected to who are your ideal audience for this. So it will not only show up on their feed, but to their connections as well. So you can leverage um, a little bit of, uh, of uh, a little extra vira virality, I think is the word that I'm looking for, a little bit more virality on your content. Yes, great question. Nick, any Excellent. others? Yes, there's another one here, which is uh, when you've got access to all of those attendees, what do you do with them? Well, great question. So I would go through, and not every one of them are going to be your target audience, but it gives you an idea of what they're attracted to, right? So if you're finding events on LinkedIn that your ideal target audience is attracted to, you might want to register for those events. Even just clicking the happy accept button doesn't mean you have to pay for anything or go through and attend, but it does give you access to that very important, the networking tab on that event. And you can go through and start to have a look at people's profiles and see which ones should you connect to. And you might even want to say, hey, I noticed that you're attending the LinkedIn event on XYZ. Um, I saw your name there, thought we could reach out to connect. There could be some synergy for us in connecting. Um, just keep it really light and breezy at that point. You're not there to sell them. You just wanted to let them know, hey, I noticed that we've got potentially some synergy. We're both attending this common event. Does it make sense? And then you would want a strategy from taking them from connection to being a client. That's a whole different thing that you know, can be done through LinkedIn events, but there are a couple of different ways that I teach my clients to do that. Yes. Does that answer the question? Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> um, Any others? And I, th I think this is probably related. You probably answered it. Uh, can we message people if it's not your event? And it sounds like the answer is yes. Yes. If you noticed on that on the my networking on the networking tab, sorry for the event, it actually has the message button there. My advice is don't just go messaging everybody asunder. Go and be strategic. Have a look at are they your ideal target audience by having a look at their profile. I would suggest connecting with them first before just messaging them. Um, so that you can build that, you know, commonality. And as I said, the message I would say is, hey, Joe Blogs, I noticed that we're both attending the LinkedIn event on XYZ. Um, there could be some great synergy in us connecting. Look forward to seeing you at the event or, um, or staying in touch here on LinkedIn. Keep it really simple, right? That's it. No spamming at that point. Okay, yes. Next question, Nick. Excellent. Well, that's all the questions we've got in, um, in time here break. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, what have we got here? If you're using, oh, I know there's another one that's just popped up. Look at that. <laughs> okay. So if you're using the strategy of looking at events uh, your target market is attracted to, do you aim for events with the highest number of engagement? 
Well, look, absolutely. But it might not be engagement. I think it's always worthwhile to do your research um, and narrow that down. But also, uh, if it's a free online event, for example, that your ideal target audience is attending, then dang, I would be suggesting attend the event yourself. There could be something like Nick's created here where you've got this opportunity to network with other people as well and to get to know people from the event. You might actually learn something um, as well. That could be a bonus, cherry on the top, but it's a good idea to, to attend and see what people are, uh, are looking at, what they're learning so that you can adjust your marketing as well to attend to that for your ideal target audience as well. Awesome. I'm just looking at the Facebook feed as well. And uh, we have great educational presentation. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think that is probably uh, all we've got uh, time for tonight. I'm sure you have a ton of other material in there that you could uh, share for the next uh, hour or two. I um, do. <laughs> but how do people get in touch with you? Or if uh, people want to find out more, what's the best way to do that? Sure. By simply connect with me on LinkedIn, that would make sense, right? Just say that you've attended, you know, the business owner smashing it online with Nick um, when you send me an invite. And if you've already sent me an invite, that's okay. I'll definitely accept. Um, but look, uh, I am running a workshop. If you are wanting to do more on LinkedIn and you're really keen to learn how to leverage this very powerful platform. I am running a one day in person LinkedIn event on Friday this week, and I've only got about three spots left. Um, unfortunately, there's we've got it limited to 10 people because I want you to bring your laptop and get shit done on the day. <laughs> I want you to actively do LinkedIn on the day, refresh your profile, find your target audience, get your strategy sorted and the whole thing. And um, yeah, so if you really are keen to get your strategy going, then I'd highly encourage you to look at that. And best way to get that, get there? Well, um, I put together a very special offer for everyone, Nick. I'm going to put it into the um, into the chat box now. I've put the link to the One Day Workshop web page. And if you enter the coupon code SMASH, because you've been on tonight's webinar with Nick, you get a very special $100 discount to the event. So that will take it from $495 for the day, which includes your morning and afternoon tea and lunch, down to $395 plus as a very special bonus, all attendees will also get a 90 minute LinkedIn coaching session with me after the workshop to refine your LinkedIn strategy. So, uh, which is valued about 1500 bucks. So that's um that's the very special offer that we've got for everyone tonight nick just because of you you're such an awesome man fantastic thank you <laughs> and look at that we've got someone in the chat there says that uh she has done one of your linkedin courses before 100 percent worth it so there you go. that's not even uh, me or julie saying it so fantastic <laughs> Yeah, oh, right. actually, Irene is on the call today too, and we did um, a whole event strategy for her just before COVID hit, actually, that was revolutionary for her business. And I know that she's been able to rinse and repeat that LinkedIn event strategy to continue growing her business again and again. So, um, look, it really is a powerful strategy, definitely works, highly recommend um, if you are running events that you dive on into it. If you need more help with it, um, hit me up on LinkedIn messages, or if you're in the Brisbane area, the event will be at Redland Bay. Um, come on to it, it's it's invaluable. You will get a whole lot out of it. Awesome, excellent. And uh, yeah, Arena says it was awesome as well too. So uh, using it right <laughs> now for a virtual event. So fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, now we also do have a door prize tonight too, don't we? Yes, we do. Can you remember what it is? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you what, tell everyone what it is. We, we talked about this sort of a long time ago. <laughs> so that was a 30-minute LinkedIn coaching session oh, yes. over Zoom. So that's valued at uh, yeah. $500. Yeah. 
So, so we'll talk anything on that coaching strategy. It could be about LinkedIn events. It could be about your profile. It could be about your strategy. You've got 30 minutes with me valued at 500 bucks. Um, it's a great opportunity to pick my brain. Fantastic. We've got a special way of drawing that tonight. We have our wheel of names. So all of our names are in this wheel of names. Remember the one rule for uh, this draw here is you have to be in the room to uh, win it. So if you've disappeared, you're not even going to know unless some kind person here tells you. So, uh, and uh, we redraw it. All right, let's spin the wheel. Let's get a virtual drum roll, please, uh, to see who our lucky winner is. And it is, it's close, Steve Dart. Woo Yay, Steve. Is he here? Are you in the room, Steve? Hey, I saw him earlier. I'm not sure if he's still here. He was there. He might have he might have ducked out. Oh, Steve. Ooh. Shame. Can someone tell Steve that he won, but he sort of missed it? <laughs> he, he won, but he lost. All right. <laughs> Let's drop him out. So that means we get to redraw it once again. And bring in that uh, virtual drum roll again. And winner is. Boom, Ron Pierre. Are you in the room, Ron? I'm in Ron. I am, uh, <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, well, you're the Thank lucky you winner of uh, 30 minutes there with uh, Julia, and I can tell you it'd be well worth it. So uh, that's a uh, great prize. Oh, thank you. So I what we'll do. Talking with, you, Ron. <laughs> talking with you, Ron. <laughs> do you know each other? No, not at oh. all. Oh, good. Well, we're oh, about well, to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll connect you up by uh, email tomorrow. So, oh. and then you can sort of uh, organize that uh, together. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Excellent. Great. All right. Well, what a fantastic evening. Everyone enjoyed that uh, this evening. Hopefully, you've all walked away with something there that you can uh, work with and uh, that you can do as well, too. So, uh, I told you it was going to be sensational. Absolutely was. So uh, thanks, Julie, for uh, spending your time with us this evening. Pleasure, Nick. Thank you so much for having me back again. It's always a pleasure to serve your community and hope that it's given them some great value. Excellent. And uh, remember, for those that do want to take it a wee bit further, um, Julie does have the workshop coming up on Friday. The link is in chat, which means now is a good time to go and save that chat by clicking those three little dots on the bottom right hand side. And you may just want to click the link to grab one of those three seats if you want to go along as well, too. That is our show tonight. That's Business Owners Smashing Online. If you enjoyed the show and you want to watch it again or want to watch any other episodes, they are all up on LinkedIn. Uh, not on LinkedIn. They're on YouTube. <laughs> LinkedIn as well, but no, they're up on YouTube. Uh, it, this episode will be up on YouTube tomorrow afternoon. Uh, best thing to do is to go along, click the link that is now in chat for YouTube channel. Go and subscribe. When you subscribe, a little bell will appear. Will appear. Click on that bell, and then you'll get a notification uh, as soon as that uh, episode has been uploaded. Um, but apart from that. Uh, we will be back here again uh, next week uh, with another exciting episode. So uh, watch out for the posts that come out and the invitation that comes out for uh, the one next week as well too. So go and have a sensational evening and uh, look forward to seeing you all again. Thanks everyone. Bye.